Yes, guys, we are finally back. We finally made it to the very first out of three reactions. I'll be jumping on this year, YouTube platform, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this year, BR, BPTV, Be Real, Be Positive Television, brothers and sisters. I do appreciate every single one of you guys for tuning in to this here vibrations, for which there is some rather interesting stuff taking place, brothers and sisters. Welcome to BR, BPTV. And of course, guys, the next one will be on the Mr. Lick's reaction, guys, as well as doing a live interaction tonight, brothers and sisters, on the matters that seem to have taken place on Sunday. I believe, brothers and sisters, that, man, I tell you, it's rather interesting. But, of course, we have Lennox Linton here is going to be doing an interview with, an interview with the individuals that actually brought uh, the seven um, personnels to Dominica. So, guys, there's some rather interesting stuff taking place. But I have to make a comment on the previous reaction I did. So, I saw a particular individual. Most people got the reaction yesterday, but this particular individual apparently did not get it. The reaction was not necessarily on what was taking place in the house. It was not on who owns the house or the, where the individual was stayed. It has absolutely nothing to do with that. The key point here that I was raising a number of questions was on the basis of why were they arrested? This is why I tend to give different viewpoints without actually knowing. So I would not be biased on the basis of actually knowing whose house this was and whose house is that one. Thank God I did not know. So I can really truly give my true interaction on that regard right there this is why i love doing the reactions because guys i give my reactions and weigh the balance in them and then you guys give your viewpoint on it as well of course persons were telling me that it was indeed arthur Athi mate and his wife's establishment and of course you know as a result of that there seems to have been a lot more indication of some strange things happening brothers and sisters which i tend to ask myself why exactly are these things happening why could it be that the Chinese have some sort of thing happening in Dominica and they don't want the outside world to know so when the Americans come, they find it very suspicious. Especially when three individuals came on private jets to the nature of the Caribbean. Very interesting stuff, right there, brothers and sisters. We have to ask ourselves a question. If we don't ask ourselves a question, we'll forever be duped into the knowledge of ignorance, brothers and sisters. So I think there's a need to ask questions <laughs> you might not think so but i definitely do think so as well and for the individuals who don't really get it from time to time i would urge you to go back in the video and watch it again some people tend to watch pieces of the videos and not watch the full video to get the full gist of what is being stated so they hear a piece and then they make a judgment on the piece that they hear in not realizing the context is relevant brothers and sisters it had nothing to do with who was the owner of the house but as to why these individuals were arrested this is why I'm asking the question yet again. Is it on the basis that China has some sort of embassy in Dominica and might be doing some strange things in Dominica? Maybe, brothers and sisters, maybe that is the case. Why they tend to be, you know, angry or where Dominica appears to be angry when it comes down to the American individuals. Maybe that's why Ross ended up going and they wanted, they didn't want Ross to stay. You know, there's always some sort of connection. The Grogs, they deported them. These seven Americans that just came, the recent one, you know, they had to leave hurriedly, apparently. Um, the Ross University left, brothers and sisters, and so much strange things it seems to happen when it comes down to Dominica and its involvement, or secrecy and its involvement. It's rather interesting when it comes down to Dominica. There's a lot of people who apparently don't know what the MOU between Dominica and China is. Who knows what on earth the government went to sign. But brothers and sisters, let us get into the vibrations for which Lennox is going to be speaking to the particular individual I brought this individual in. So without further ado, brothers and sisters, don't forget, of course, with a further ado, click the like button. I would appreciate that, brothers and sisters. Click that like button, thumbs up this year video, and of course, subscribe to help this channel grow. And also, you'll be notified when I drop my videos right there and then. This is going to be a pretty long one, so hopefully we can get through this thing as quickly as possible. So, <laughs> let's go, guys. We are joined uh, at this hour by... A Mr. Brian Lloyd, the gentleman who coordinated the visit of uh, seven U.S. nationals. Uh, now, guys, before I continue right there, this photo is alleging that Skerritt is an anti-American -Ameri and pro-China, yet imports voters from the United States to steal elections. This is an alleged photo of what is being indicated right there. And, of course, at the bottom, it indicates that Lennox Linton interview with Brian Lloyd, one of the individuals, one of the Americans arrested recently. Interesting. I'm not sure if you got the audio already, but of course, this individual sent this for me, and of course, I'm definitely going to play it for you guys so you guys can get the gist of it. U.S. nationals, 
uh, to Dominica. They arrived at the Canefield Airport last week, uh, Friday. And uh, by Sunday morning, they were being interrogated by the police. The most we heard was that it was some investigation of immigration status. Mm. Now, th this made no sense. How do you guys, investigate the immigration status? Guys, listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. If this is not some strange things, I don't know. <laughs> listen carefully. They arrived. We, we, we're pleased to be talking with Brian Lloyd now. Brian is a long-time friend of Dominica. Uh, Dominica is not new to him. Uh, I remember uh, talking with him after Hurricane Maria mm. uh, back in, in 2017. So, Brian, again, uh, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm happy we could do this. Yes, we're in St. Thomas. We departed from uh, Dominica yesterday. We mm -hmm. didn't, we know. Also, it wasn't the individual who brought them in. Well, most likely, maybe he was the one who think because he has familiarization with Dominica and brought the rest of them to come in. So maybe he's actually the one that led the charge. But of course, he was actually one of the individuals who were part of these seven Americans who were arrested by the Dominican authority right there. We no longer felt safe being there. Hmm. So uh, I felt a responsibility for the people who are with me. And so we departed to come up here where we felt right. more comfortable. So they left Dominica to go to St. Thomas where they felt safer. Explain to the people of Dominica what really happened. We arrived on uh, Friday, mm -hmm. and when we arrived, the one unusual thing, uh, I've been flying in since, uh, since 2003, and flying into Canefield, so it is nothing new to me. Hmm. The only thing that was unusual is that there was no, um, uh, there was no immigration officer at the airport that day. Hmm. And so uh, we clearly... So there seemed to have been some sort of immigration issue for real. Okay, let's continue. Uh, we cleared customs and waited uh, with customs, uh, which had been contacted by immigration. Uh, I have a good friend there who helps me, uh, Fiona Eileen, and uh, she took our passports and uh, fees down to the immigration office at Woodbridge, at the, at the port of Woodbridge. And uh, we were there for cleared in by immigration at that time. And we thought nothing of it. Um, we took, uh, we spent the day, uh, the rest of the day, we got our, our rental car and... Uh, so they took their passports and everything like that for them to be able to clear immigration. He actually knew somebody of previous visits who, was, who could have helped him in that regard. Reached out to that person, they took their passports and brought it to the immigration. So what was wrong with that, that, that scenario, right there, brothers and sisters? After they cleared customs? On uh, Saturday, we... Uh, went up to the freshwater lake to do the hike up there and, and enjoyed ourselves. And then Sunday morning at 6.30 in the morning, there came a knock on our door. Uh, we were all awakened from a sound sleep, and it was the police. And they said that uh, they had to take us down to the police station for, uh, uh, for discussion. Hmm. Um, we asked what the issue was. And we were told that we could not be told what the issue was. <laughs> well, wait a while. So normally when you're arresting somebody or taking somebody or charging somebody of anything, brothers and sisters, you need to inform them that this is why we're charging you. This is what we're taking you for. They're telling them that they're not informing them as to why. <laughs> as to why that they are taking them out. It's kind of like, it remind me of my case, brothers and sisters. When we decided to challenge the police officers, asked us to exactly, are, are we detained? They said, yes, we are detained. Why? They had no idea why we were detained to the point where I told the individual, the lawyer on the phone and he's asking why. Then he said, we are detained suspicion of suspicion. <laughs> yes, brothers and sisters, you, you can't make this stuff up. You can't. <laughs> This is this is better than movie, brother. Better than movie. Ay, ay, ay. Let's continue. Was, and we were told that we could not be told what the issue was, but we would be informed of the issue after we reached the police station. Hmm. So how many, how, um, many, how many police officers are we talking about? I didn't count, but there were probably there were probably seven, seven Six. or eight. Okay. Probably right. approximately one for each of us, I would say. But, uh, and, and one thing I will say is uh, the police officers were, were um, professional, they were deferential, and uh, they, were, um, they were respectful. 
So I have nothing against the police officers themselves. I got the feeling that they were not particularly happy with being there. Hmm. You got the feeling that they were not particularly happy to be there, which means that there might have been somebody else instigating that move from the police officers. There might have been somebody 10,000 miles away instigated, hey, wait a while. And this is probably where this scenario of Athimate's situation is. We know Athimate is a strong stance on freedom in Dominica. Of course, the deterioration of freedom seems to be happening. And he's one of the individuals who point out, hey, guys, you are losing your freedom. Can't you not see? Can't thou not see us? That thou art losing its freedom. And obviously these people came to stay by him. You know, private jet individuals, what have you. What could have been the situation? The police officers seem to have not wanted to be there. But there was somebody else that seems to be the instigator to all of this. That they were getting their instructions for Orders. this from someplace else. Ah. But we... Someplace else? Someplace else? Okay. But we never did get any kind of clear indication as to what it was we were being held for. Hmm. Um, it was intimated that it was a, uh, an immigration issue. And no, our passports were not stamped. However, ah. um, flight crew often do not have their passports stamped because they travel to so many airports. And if you were to get a stamp at every airport, your uh, passport would very quickly become unusable. Hmm, I did not, well, come to think of it, brothers and sisters, I've been in situations like this before, to the, well, let me not say nothing else, but what he's saying there, I've experienced this before, brothers and sisters, I've experienced something like this before, depending on who you're flying with and these kind of people there, it's, it's interesting, this is why I always tell people that, the people at the top, the people who have the monies and these kind of things there, they live by different rules. And he's indicating that very thing right there. When you travel on passport, brothers and sisters, you hop the public planes and you go places, you have to stamp. He is indicating that as a pilot, these people, them, they don't normally stamp their passports in that regard. Because they tend to fly all over the place, they don't really stamp them, bam, bam, boom, bam, they just know they're coming in, so forth and so forth. They would obviously know who is coming in, into the country. Okay, they were cleared by customs and you know, and so forth, brothers and sisters. Anyways, let's continue. Get their uh, uh, passport stamp, and that was indicated to the police uh, by the official from the uh, from the immigration uh, when he came down to the police station. Now, hmm. that is secondhand knowledge. I did not hear him actually say that, but that's what I was told. Okay. Uh, in spite of that, we were still we continued to be held. We were held for seven hours hmm. and finally, re uh, finally uh, Dur released and taken back to Exotica Cottages. During that seven hours, what questions were you asked? Mm. What, what, what were the police looking for? Well, mm. it, it wasn't... Mm. Hey, no, respect Lennox. <laughs> respect Lennox. Respect Lennox on that, man. What were the police looking for? Well, it, it wasn't... It, it, reason, one of the reasons it took so long is unfortunately uh, the officer who was taking the, uh, the was uh, recording the discussion did not write very quickly. Mm. And so we were limited to how fast she could write down the questions from uh, the investigating officer. Ah, and so they brought them in for investigation. They brought them in for investigation. So when they're talking and these kind of things there, when you're in Cyber and Sisters and investigating you, and the things that you see, they write it down. The things that the police officers see, they write it down so they have it documented. Which is interesting. So if you answer, they write down the answer that you put and they take that time. Yes, they are. So I understand what he's saying right there. It's true. Uh, but the kinds of questions were very simple. There were a couple that seemed rather unusual. Uh, they asked questions about where we were staying and why we were staying. Uh, we were staying up at Exotica Cottages uh, with uh, my friend Athy Martin. And I've been staying with Athy since 2003. Mm. And uh, Athy and Faye have become friends of mine. So I continue to stay there because I, I, like, I like it. Mm. And I've tried to stay apolitical. I know that there are issues between 
uh, the sitting government and uh, Afi, and, and he has been uh, has been the whole world knows the whole world knows that there's some funny business going on when it comes on to Dominica brothers and sisters uh, has been vocal but I have done my level best to stay out of that you know that is that is for Dominica I mm. am a US citizen and it is not my place to insert myself into how you choose to run your country mm -hmm. even though you might have your views uh, definitely they would definitely have their views on it they might not say it publicly just like I remember the people of um, who came down for the passport stuff they are to say the official stuff and they are to say the off the records of the records the the people who involved in the the OAS they knew was it the OAS no the people who observed the election observers they they knew something fishy was happening but officially they had to say what was based of the laws of Dominica they were two completely contradictory things but on official merit as on official professional individuals they had to go based off the laws of Dominica this is why they indicated that the laws of Dominica need to be changed because some of them are outdated and not relevant to the point of today as a result of the point of today this is why these people are able to capitalize but of course they mention what what needs to be done to rectify the situation right there so of course brothers and sisters let's continue your country mm -hmm. however i must say this is turning me around hmm. this is this kind of behavior this kind of activity it, it, it's it's unacceptable mm. and as a result i have to decide what are you going what i'm going to do and that may include not coming down anymore. Oh. Let, let, For me, instance, let, let me ask you let me, let me ask you this brian hmm. you uh, familiar with Dominica because as you said you've been coming here since 2003 but you had six yeah. other persons on this trip more sort of uh, aviation tourism trip you had Jeffrey Carpenter and Hugh Carpenter and then you had Amber Bushnell James and Jeremy Bushnell and Faye McCullough was also with you these are US nationals uh, who were coming yeah. to Dominica for the first time no well Faye has come with me before oh, okay. um, Faye okay. is uh, Faye, is, uh, Faye is my life partner now. Okay. Uh, we are both older, and, uh, and and we spend most of our time together. Okay. Uh, and yes, she has been down to Dominica three times, including once immediately after Maria, and then mm. again this last Christmas, and then, of course, this trip. Mm. However, uh, the Bushnells <laughs> and the Carpenters uh, were part of my testing of how we would bring airplanes into Canefield, um, you know, pilots in the United States have great freedom to travel. Yep. And, but most of them are concerned about flying over water, doing international travel. So I offered to uh, pilots in the United States to lead them down here, show them the process for for navigating and and uh, going through uh, customs and immigration. Um, so I brought down the first two people this was a kind of a test uh, they were going to give me feedback as to ways i could improve things and they understood that that this was not uh, a tightly organized uh, event and this is really in preparation for another trip where i was going to bring down uh between 10 and 15 airplanes hmm. in may and i can tell you right now hmm. that trip is not going to happen yeah so when when dominica is talking about its tourism product you think that what happened here can happen in antigua antigua is building a, a airport in barbuda so that they can fly people exactly like what this guy is doing people of substance and when i talk about substance brothers, i talk about the individuals that have little money to come and spend and bring foreign exchange into dominica don't get me wrong you know i'm talking about i want everybody to come down but the people the man's trying to bring 10 to 15 planes down in may they do a little flight test so they can come down with their people and everything like that and help with the surplus of the natural the caribbean yet still police coming to arrest them they themselves uncomfortable i've heard this as well before they indicated this the police was uncomfortable with that whole situation but they had to because of orders that they were given from somewhere from somewhere keep in mind from somewhere brothers and sisters they stayed writing on all sorts of things taking the time they slow like crazy you could have a typewriter then best they had typewriter and shing type anyways me leave that alone brothers and sisters but what has happened 
is a further deterioration of the very tourism industry that Dominica said wants to boost. You're building all sorts of hotels that are empty today. The best one, apparently, from our understanding, is, is the one in Portsmouth um, Intercontinental Resort. That maximum capacity has not even reached 10%. And this is what you're doing. So what do you expect them to do? You don't think that they're going to be reporting that? Look, the man says he's going to bring 10 to 15 planes in addition. So they can utilize Kenfield instead of going all the way to Marigot and passing through those windy roads. They can land in Kenfield, have some planes there. Whatever monies they have to pay as a result of them landing there. They make surplus, they come in, they buy food, they buy, um, 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 they travel within the country, whether they're using bus or tour guys, whatever. They travel, they participate in staying in hotels. This is one of the things I always say, brothers and sisters. Why doesn't the government utilize the Chinese? Tell the Chinese, hey, go and stay in apartment places to help. With the surplus, I understand that building your own thing might be cheaper for you in the long run, but mes amis, come on, let the money circulate. You literally stopping them from coming, boss. An aircraft with two or three people on it, it lands in Kingfield. These people, they rent a car, they deal with businesses that do, uh, that do hiking tours hiking and... Tours scuba diving tours, and these are people who have generally have more means than the average uh, uh, tourist. That's exactly what I say. In <laughs> these are people with substance because they have the funds that they can come and freely spend to do things that most tourists would not be able to do. Scary them, stop that we. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, I have generally have more means <coughs> than the average uh, uh, tourist. That's our first time I listening to that week. And I saying everything the man saying. First time listening to that. This is why I like to do reactions, brothers and sisters. Because when I give my authentic reaction and then they come back and say exactly what I'm saying, I know I'm in the right path. It's simple logic and common sense. Anyways, let's continue. And they're going to bring four or five thousand dollars US dollars to your uh, to your economy. <laughs> and as far as I can tell right now, that's not going to happen. Okay. So that's a direct impact on your of course. from this event. Now, <laughs> the, so, so, you, so you had the Carpenters and you had the Bushnells. Uh, yes. All, all of them from both families from North Carolina? No, uh, the Carpenters are from North Carolina, where uh, Jeffrey Carpenter is a uh, sitting appellate judge. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, the uh, Bushnells operate a... Uh, an aviation activity business in Texas. Guys, can you imagine that these people fall in love with Dominica so much, just like Ross did back in the day? Today, we don't have Ross because of the government. Ross leaving Dominica is a direct 100% result as a result of scary them right there, brothers and sisters. Um, we losing visa free access to United Kingdom is a direct result as a result of scary them. We losing, we are about to lose European Union. Is a direct result of scary them. We lose visa free to Ireland. Direct result from scary them. Look another one. Direct result from scary them. And you think they're doing things for you? Me boy, I tell you. Boy, I tell you, boy. Okay. Okay. Now, what what was their reaction to what happened on Sunday? Well, um, there was a good deal of of quiet questioning. However, in the case of uh, Mr. Carpenter, he was incensed that his 18-year-old son, they were there together on a father-son trip prior to his son going off to college. And uh, he was absolutely incensed that his uh, son had to be uh, going through that. Immediately after our uh, detainment, uh, he was able to contact his senator from the state of North Carolina, who notified the U.S. State Department and got the uh, embassy involved. That's my people, them. Um... <laughs> scary don't know what he... Scary don't know what he doing. No, boy. Ay, ay, Oh, you better never leave government, eh? You think what you're setting up there going to help you? Well, I don't know. And uh, this is an ongoing uh, investigation within the United States as to 
how this could have happened. And not just that, Oli bring another report. Another one has been sent into the United States re re regards in regards to the gov what the government doing. Another report has been sent in. Oh, okay. You, you, guys, you know, oh, if Dominicans know what the boy, boy, I tell you. And I know that this is not over. <gasps> uh, the U.S. is taking a very, uh, a, a very uh, oh. pointed view. Boy, I tell you, boy. Oh, my goodness gracious. Only a pass. Well, you better. It hmm. happened, and uh, I expect that there will be uh, further events uh, with regards to the U.S. government. <laughs> now, with regard to the aviation tourism trip you planned in uh, May with 15 planes or thereabout, you were discussing that here with whom? The Ministry of Tourism? Oh, uh, sorry about. Sorry, guys, before I continue right there. What if these guys love Dominica so much, like I was mentioning, Ross loves Dominica so much, I sidetracked myself. What if they decided, hey guys, maybe we can actually try to do some lessons for Dominicans who are less fortunate or individuals who actually want to learn to fly planes. Maybe we can do something like this. You know, welcome that ambience to create p opportunities, no? <laughs> well, that has gone out the window. Of tourism? Uh, well, actually, yes. I w well, not with the ministry, Minister of Tourism. I was working mostly with uh, Benoit Bardouille, uh, okay. who is the CEO of DASPA. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bardouille and I have, uh, have engaged in uh, discussions and in some uh, business activity. For instance, uh, after Hurricane Maria, uh, I put together an emergency communication system. Um, I'm, a, I'm an electrical engineer also. I put together a, a, an emergency communication system for DASPA that allows them to uh, have communication after power and, uh, and telephone and internet are lost. So you're helping them, and that is what they do you? A good relation, working relationship with, uh, with DASPA. Mm -hmm. And uh, I find, I find uh, DASPA and its employees uh, good to work with. Now, you've indicated that the police officers seem to be not so much interested in this, but they were taking the instructions from, obviously, from somewhere else. Um, you are not a stranger to Dominica. You've been coming here since no. um, 2003. You've done a lot of work here. Uh, so you being here shouldn't raise any eyebrows. But I can't see why it would. The yeah. only thing that the only things I have ever done on the island have been to the benefit of the island. Mm -hmm. I mean, immediately following Maria, I set up an airlift, and we moved, uh, we moved medicine, we moved patients, we moved doctors, we moved food and supplies uh, for a month following Maria, and and I can't imagine that that could be viewed by anyone is anything but positive for the country of course it's positive for the country but when you go and you know you try to help and people oh what is why why you know you know sometimes you have to I'd imagine that that could be viewed by anyone is anything but positive for the country <laughs> No, well, I, don't, I don't think any, any right-thinking person in Dominica views it as anything but <laughs> positive. Right, you, you're right. Right-thinking person. Uh, which is why the developments of the weekend are so strange mm. to the people of Dominica. And a lot of them are looking for answers. They want to make this make sense. Yes. I can't see any way to make this make sense. I tr It's not supposed to make sense. <laughs> they felt a little threatened. Why are these individuals, a set of these individuals coming in in private jets to Dominica? Why? They said the police to investigate. What are you guys doing here? <laughs> um, I absolutely can state unequivocally that we were there as tourists and looking forward to a wonderful time on your island, as I have come to expect for 21 years. Has anybody spoken to you since this? Anybody? Well, I, <laughs> I can tell you that, that my telephone 
gets gets many text messages from my friends on the island. Mm-hmm. And all of the comments I have gotten so far are, how could this be? How could this happen? Has anybody from the government reached out to you? Of course not. Um, I, I must, before we left, the uh, permanent secretary for tourism and uh, the CEO of DASPA uh, apologized to hmm. us profusely. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh. Why didn't the person that sent the police officers come to apologize? Was the permanent secretary and this individual was that sent the police? First of all, they can't send the police, not in the first place. Why didn't the individual who sent the police come to apologize to them? That is what I want to know. Apologize to us profusely uh, for the event. And, uh, and, and they were clearly very sincere in, in their apology. And we certainly uh, accept it uh, on face value. But for ah, it, face value, okay. We've heard nothing. We've heard nothing from the police. I know that the U.S. Embassy has inquired as to any of the the paperwork or information about the um, about the event, and apparently Boy. there is none. So. Boy. Boy. <laughs> aye, aye. So there's not like an arrest record or anything that one would ordinarily expect in the case of, of a case being uh, prepared. Uh, so, so no, we've heard absolutely nothing from the government other than uh, the assurances of both uh, DASPA and the uh, Permanent Secretary for, uh, for uh, Tourism that this is not Dominica and we're really sorry it happened and we would hope that you would come back to our country again. But the question here is why did that happen? If they apologize and say this is not Dominica, why did that happen? Could there be something that is going on, brothers? Could there be something else that is going on beyond the people's understanding? Or as a result of the ignorance of the people not going knowing what on earth? I mean, Mezamo, you don't know what is the MO, you offer a number of things. We don't know what. They talk about transparency in government, brothers and sisters. The government that I know has been the most non transparent is the present one. So maybe there's something interesting going on in that regard. Maybe there's some rather interesting stuff going on in the embassies of China in Dominica. I don't know, brothers and sisters, but what is going on? What is going on right there? You ever ask yourself that question? Certain things was happening and you're talking about that stranger. When Choksi came in, brothers and sisters, we didn't find that strange. When some plane just magically appeared in Dominica and they didn't want you to film. I have the, I have the record of the plane, you know, guys. <laughs> when the plane land anyways so brothers and sisters there's no 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 nothing of that sort nobody thinking maybe something else is going on why they seem to be targeting individuals maybe just maybe no oh. she would come back to our country again and i would hope that i could too but hmm. again until i have something from the government that makes it very clear hmm. that this was a mistake that it has been dealt with uh, that someone operated outside of, uh, of of acceptable parameters. Somebody operated outside the accept acceptable parameters. So if you get the apology, you good. If you get apology from the government, you good. <laughs> if you what, you good. That government okay now? You think that government that government doesn't even care about its own citizens? You think it's a non-citizen to care about? Well. Once the non-citizens can give them money, then they will care. You think the government cares about them? Oh, you? Yeah. And uh, been dealt with. I can't come back to, to your country and feel safe. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's easy to understand. The point of the matter is that they have not indicated to you that you or any member of your team or any member of the group uh, did anything in Dominica that merited what happened to them on Sunday uh, and, and they, they would have had no evidence of anything happening before <laughs> you arrived in Dominica that would merit this sort of treatment so that is why it, it is so weird and it doesn't make sense but um, <laughs> maybe it makes no sense but until until the government uh, actually says something about this um, we can't know anything because it's just been uh, been a, a lid of secrecy uh, once they've released us. Um, one other point, I think I told, I mentioned uh, Fiona Eileen, 
And she, um, even after they released us and said, yes, there is nothing more, they still picked her up and interrogated her. Hmm. So um, They still picked up who? Uh, Fiona. Oh, okay. She's a lovely lady, hmm. uh, has, uh, has a son. She lives up in Stock Farm. Hmm. Um, I met her when I was here in 2010. My late wife and I came and did a summer school program and helped uh, Gloria Walsh with her summer program for disadvantaged children. And then we ran a summer school program in Soufriere. Um, and, uh, 14, years, met, 14 years ago. That was, yes, 2000, yes 14 wow. years ago, 2010. Wow. And at that time, uh, Fiona was working for Child Fund, and we made friends with her. And we have re uh, remained friends with her and uh, helped her when we could. And whenever we're on the island, she, she helps us. So, uh, you know, we're just friends. So, so but they picked her up after, after releasing us and after we thought it was done. So uh, clearly... There was something going on definitely something going on because if they cleared you and they go to pick up somebody they know you are associated with to i guess question her about what is not they talk about didn't they talk about immigration fiona in dominica you know guys why they talk about immigration they pick you guys up of immigration and then they come in for her afterwards okay they're con the government is somehow continuing with this and we know if you're foolish enough to believe or it's just if you foolish enough to believe you're just immigration thing guys all right so yesterday morning at about 10 o'clock when you left there was this what huge sigh of relief from the team well, yeah. oh yes absolutely <laughs> there's no question that that we were uh even uh, our attorney wayne nordy mm -hmm. uh came down to make sure that we were able big up nordy one time too and nothing further happened um, and that's another issue. Um, we have a substantial legal bill with Mr. Nordy, and he absolutely deserves to be paid, and he will mm -hmm. be paid. Mm -hmm. So why do we have that bill? Ah, that is the co ah, yeah, yeah. Why do you have that bill for something caused by the police officers, whoever gave them that risk? Shouldn't they be the one to pay that bill? You have to pay somebody for what they caused? That is, you know, just like when the government does you wrong, brothers and sisters, and you have to pay lawyers to find your, fight your right and all these kind of things there. Who is supposed to bear the cost of that bill? Not the government who has done you wrong. You then have to pay. <laughs> Boy. Will be paid. Mm -hmm. But why do we have that bill? My point. Why did we need to hire an attorney to protect our interests and to make sure that everything was done in accordance to law? Uh, for something like this, well, um, that was a direct that's a great cost. Great question. To us. It, it was a direct cost to you. So, uh, is there going to be action going forward that will allow you should those who are really responsible for your legal pay top sue them, man? I don't know. I, it's certainly something that uh, that we intend to pursue mm -hmm. because you know uh, there are seven of us, and uh, uh, Mr. Norty is, uh, is is a well respected and, and well known attorney and. Mm -hmm. He deserves to be paid uh, his his fee, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not an inconsequential fee. And uh, so, yes, I think, frankly, I think the government should pay that fee. I agree. I just said that, you know, guys. They should pay that fee because it's your fault why I'm in that situation. I think the government should pay that fee for us. Right. But uh, I, I do not expect to hear anything from the government. I really do not. Well, you should sue them. Get more money from them, or you must win. There's a lot of cases that's going against the government that people must win. They must. It that may be your if they must win. So what the government tends to do, or what the court judicial system tends to do, is to constantly push back cases and kill time. Just kill time. Just constantly kill time. This is why just the justice individual come and say that the court system is broken. It is broken, brothers and sisters. Sorry about that, guys. But the system is broken. Let's continue. I really do not. Brian, I, I really, really empathize with you and the, your friends uh, from the group that arrived here, hoping to have a wonderful time, and it, it turned out like, like that. The man bring his son, his 18-year-old son, to have a little time, father-son time, 
in Dominica to explore Dominica, to free up in Dominica. He and his son, they end up in jail, boy, boy. And then they have to pay the lawyer, boy. To all your friends in Dominica and the people who've come to respect what you have done for the country and the work that you've been able to do with them over the years, um, that one day they will have the opportunities, not too long from now, to welcome you back <laughs> to our shores. Thank you, Brian. I hope so. I hope so, too. Yeah. I, I want you to know, I truly have considered Dominica to be my second home. Uh, yes, I live in the United States. It's best you didn't do that, no? Because sometimes it's the people in the home that treat you the worst. So it's better you remain a foreigner. Right now, they're treating foreigners better. So you consider in Dominica a home and act in accordance to, hey, that is my home. I, I think you rather remain a foreigner. It's unfortunate that I'm saying this. It's very unfortunate, brothers and sisters. You think I want to say some of the things that I'm saying? You think I want to tell people, hey, guys, Dominica is not going anywhere soon. You need to get out of Dominica to elevate your standing. Literally, I've seen people who left Dominica doing the same thing that they've been doing in Dominica overseas and has surpassed their wildest dreams. So when I tell people, guys, go overseas because I see the evidence. People in Dominica struggling like crazy. Struggling as one that just left. We're looking to see what that individual has done with themselves. We will see, brothers and sisters, one year I'm giving this individual to make themselves, and I will definitely hi. And, and being part of your community. And that was one thing that my late wife and I found when we came down in 2010 and ran that program, is we were truly accepted into your community, and we felt like, like we could be a part. Yeah. Um, that has been Shattered. that has been destroyed, and that is what is so sad. Yeah. Brian, thank you very much for joining us. Well, guys, I know I go long on this one, but I think it needed to be said. It doesn't stop there, you know, guys. We're gonna be reacting to um, uh, things on later on today, brothers and sisters. Uh, what's his name again? I, I seen his face. We, I seen his face, guys. We're gonna be reacting to him a bit later on today. Ah, yes, Lofty Dura, guys. We're gonna be reacting to Lofty on that situation right there. And of course, definitely tune in, brothers and sisters. Definitely tune in for that vibes. Yeah. Guys, if you understand this video, give this video a thumbs up. Click the like button. I would appreciate that. Subscribe, brothers and sisters, to, of course, help, to help this channel to grow as well as you'll be notified when I drop my videos right here. Then, guys, tune in a bit later on for the Mr. Licks reaction, guys. Rather interesting stuff, man, that is taking place in Dominica. But, man, I tell you. I took man. If I go too long, guys, I'll just leave that there. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe, brothers and sisters. Your boy Mr. Licks once again on this here. BR, BBTV, be real. Be positive.